Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and I want to do a little something different today. Today I want to tell you a story. A story about me and about Ursula Le Guin, the famous American novelist of science fiction and fantasy who passed away last month. After she died, a whole bunch of people told stories, all of the stories of how she had influenced them. And this is mine. Now to start off this story, I should emphasize I am totally a Le Guin fanboy. And when I say I'm a Le Guin fanboy, I do mean that I am a Le Guin fanboy. It just keeps going. No, just keep going. That's not even close to everything that's on my shelf. I probably have about 75 to 80 percent of everything she's ever published. Everything from the ultra popular to the stuff you can barely find on a bookshelf anymore. Now the story begins properly in my junior year of high school. I went to high school at Jesuit High School in Beaverton, Oregon, which is just outside of Portland, Oregon, where in fact Ursula Le Guin lived for much of her life. Now in the junior year, every student has to write their junior paper. The junior paper is on a singular artist, visual artist, or a photographer, or a dramatist, or an actor, or an author. It's about their body of work and talking all about it. And if I recall, it was like 10 pages, which back then felt like the world, but by now it's like nothing. And of course, I have to write it about Le Guin, which I do. Now there's an unwritten rule about the junior paper, which is that if you do it about any kind of artist who is still alive, you have to try and send it to them. Now there's no official written rule about this. It's not like the teacher is going to come down and you say, no, 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 you have to send this to them. But you're encouraged to try. Now, I didn't want to send the paper directly to her after I had finished it. Uh, there's kind of a bad history of sending unsolicited manuscripts to authors in the mail. But about a year or two later, I was at, I think it was Bookfest or Wordfest or some similar convention was going on in Portland at the time, and Ursula Le Guin was there. So, of course, I went and I got a moment to just come up and ask her and say, hey, I wrote this report, it's on you, can I share it with you? To which she responded, yes. Uh, then I promptly forgot about that for about another year or so until I saw her name come up again. Uh, by this point, I was at the University of Oregon, and she was coming to give a talk and seminar and Q&A kind of thing there. And I go, oh, hey, I've got the paper now, and she's going to be here, and I have her permission to give it to her, so let me go grab it. So the day of her talk comes, and I'm, you know, panicking and excited, and is there a panic-sided kind of thing? Anyways. So I run across campus and I go grab one of those nice little manila envelopes because I don't just want to hand her a sheet of papers. I bring it back to my dorm room and I stuff my copy of my high school report in there. And I also realize that by pure coincidence, I've been a columnist, a weekly columnist for the Daily Emerald. And that week my column was on writing fantasy. And it was all allegorical of the importance of writing fantasy and the allegory was to hatching dragons. Okay, I think this is great, this is perfect, this is like right in Le Guin's wheelhouse. So I'll take a copy of that, I'll stuff it in with it, and I go off to the talk. And of course the talk is great, but I don't remember a darn thing about it because I was just, you know, starry-eyed and everything. And after the talk, of course, there's a long line of people who are there to meet her or ask for autographs and such. And I don't mind being at the end of the line because <laughs> it's Ursula Le Guin. And probably about another hour and a half later, I finally make it up to the front of the line and I say, hi, um, we met about a year or so ago. I asked if I could give you something, uh, and here it is. And she just kind of gets this bright smile on her face and just kind of holds out her hands. And I give her the little manila envelope with my report and with the article from the Daily Emerald. And then I say, you know, thank you, so on and so on. I, I'm babbling because I'm fanboying completely. And then I say, you know, I have to go because I, I still have homework to do in the morning. And uh, that was that. So I handed it off, I went home, and I kind of didn't think about it for a while. And then my dad calls me up a couple weeks later. And he says, hey, you got mail. Which is kind of odd for me, because, I mean, I'm 19, 20 at the time. I don't get much mail in the first place, let alone mail at home when I'm out at the dorm down in Eugene. And so I'm like, uh, okay... Who's it from? Yeah, 
and he pulls out the letter, yes, uh, this letter, and he says, uh, Le Guin. And so I am once again really excited because Ursula Le Guin wrote me a letter, but I'm also panicking because that letter is two hour drive away from me. And I think my dad was just extremely awesome and he that night made me a care package with a few little snacks and goodies and just tucked this letter away in there and shipped it overnight to me at the dorm. And this is the letter. And I want to share it with you. She says, Dear Joseph, Well, I give your paper an A. No mincing minus. Thank you. Sometimes I feel that I'm totally out of touch with American literature. But then somebody like you reads my stuff and gets it. And somebody like Michael Chabon comes along and writes stuff that I get. And this is a good feeling that there are readers and writers out there that read and write the way I do. Whatever that is. Do we have to call it sci-fi? Why? It's a built-in put-down. I hope you go on writing fantasy, or whatever it is, and hatching dragons. Ursula. It's a decade ago. Still have the letter. And it's kind of hard for me to put into words how it felt to read that letter for the first time. Because that I wrote something that she liked. Okay that I wrote something that she agreed with, okay. That I wrote something that she thanked me for, that I was able to make her feel better about what she was writing, me, a punk mathematician, telling her, and she's one of the biggest names in science fiction and fantasy? I didn't think I could do that. Now, I haven't been as good about writing fantasy or hatching dragons or whatever it is, but I haven't completely left it behind either. So uh, there's this book I want to share with you. It's a book called Digger, graphic novel. This is the complete Omnibus edition, and it was so amazingly well-liked. It actually won the Hugo Award a couple years back. And if you grab this copy, you can find my name in here. I just did some additional editing. Additional editing by Joseph Fantahai. And, you know, this is just, it's an amazing book, and I helped out a little bit. You know, I made certain the periods were in the right place, and the commas weren't uh, drifting off the page. But I did that. I helped, I, in my own little way, to make this book a reality. And I wouldn't have done that if Ursula Le Guin hadn't had confidence in me that I could do it in the first place. And uh, that's my Ursula Le Guin story. Don't know that it's that funny or that amazing, but it meant a lot to me. And so before I go, I want to share one last thing with you, because one of the things I have of her is a book of poetry, and the first poem in here is probably my favorite poem of all time. So I'll share this one with you too. The Old Lady. I have dreed my dree, I have wooed my weird, and now I shall grow a five-foot beard, and braid it into tiny braids, and wander where the webfoot wades among the water's shining blades. I will fear nothing I have feared. I'm the queen of spades, the jack of trades, braiding my knives into my beard. Why should I know what I have known? Once was enough to make it my own. The things I got I will forget, I'll knot my beard into a net, and cast the net and catch a fish who will ungrant my every wish, and leave me nothing but a stone on the riverbed alone. Leave me nothing but a rock where the feet of herons walk. Thanks, Ursula.